Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how to create a spinning menu wheel on Hover. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so right now I'm in my admin dashboard. So I'm going to start off by building a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here, click on add new, and we're going to give this page a name. So let's call this menu wheel. But of course you can call this page whatever you want and then click on use the DV Builder. Now this tutorial, we're going to build from scratch. So I'm gonna go ahead and select build from scratch and I'm gonna choose a single column. Next, I'm going to add some text here. So I'm gonna search for my text module and select it. So we already have this dummy text in here, but all we need is just a title to go with this. So I'm just gonna add my title here. Now, as you can see, this title that says, how can we help is uh, set to heading two. And I'll show you how I did that. So I'm just going to highlight this text here. So now you can see it's set to heading two. So if you want to add your own text and set it to heading two, just highlight the text, click on this drop down, and set it to heading two. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. The next stage now is to stylize this text. So I'm going to come over here to this design tab. So I'm going to start here with my text font. So I'm just going to click here and click here where it says default because right now it's applying the default font of our theme. So I'm going to come over here and search for a specific one called share tag. I'm going to select it. I'm going to come over here to letter spacing and set this to one pixel. Now we need to customize our heading text size. So I'm going to scroll down here until I get to heading text. Now remember, we set this to heading two. So make sure you select the tab and then I'm going to set my size to 8VW. So pretty much this is all we need to do here. So I'm going to save this and then we're going to go ahead and add a brand new row. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, choose single column. Now for this row, let's start by customizing this. So we're going to go into our row settings here. And so we're going to start by adding a background color. So I'm going to come over here and click on this plus button and paste my background color. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below, and that post will have all these settings. Next, we're going to go and set our gradient. So I'm going to come over here and click this plus button, add my first color. Now, this color here is going to have some transparency. So I'm going to drag this second slider down so I can get these um, figures here in this bracket. So what you want to do is to replace the, what's in that with our new values. Next, I'm going to click here and add my second color for the gradient. And again, I'm just going to paste it in here like that. Now, this is where we need to customize and get that circular section. So right now we set our gradient type is set to linear. This needs to be set to radial. Next, we're going to come over here and make sure that your radial direction is set to center. And then all we need to do now is to set our start and end position. So our start position here is going to be 36% and our end position here is going to be zero. Now notice that we've just created a shape in there. Now we need to make further adjustments. So let's come over here to the design tab, click on sizing. So the first thing we're going to do here is to set our gutter width. So make sure you set this to yes. And we are going to set this to one. Now the gutter width is the, the space between the columns. So that is why we are setting it to one. Next, we need to set our width to 500 pixels. So I'm going to manually enter it in here and make sure you add the pixels to, uh, to make this work. Now I'm going to also come over here to the height and set it to 500 as well. Next, we need to go to our padding. So I'm going to come over here, click on spacing. And for the padding, we're going to set um, our padding zero to the top and the bottom. And I'm just going to activate this chain here so the value can be applied to both sides. Now, as you can see, this design here is for our desktop, but of course we want this to look beautiful on mobile devices. So to do that, you want to click here on this little icon. And here is where we can set our tablet size and also for our smartphone size. So I'm going to click here on tablet. And by default, we have this zero pixels. So we want this to be 20. And this needs to be both to the top and the bottom. And then we also need to apply it to the left. So I'm going to set my 20 over here. And the final thing we need to do here is to set our margin, which is going to be minus 10 to the right. And this needs to be for the mobile phone. So make sure you're on the right tab and then set your minus 10%. All right, so the next stage now is to add our rounded corners so that we have that circular design. 
I'm just going to go back to my desktop uh, tab here. And then I'm going to scroll down until I get to border. So by default, it's set to zero pixels. But notice what happens when you add 50%. Now we have a perfect circle and because we created that um, earlier shape, we can also add another level of design by adding some box shadows. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here to box shadow and we are going to add some inner shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this one here. And for our sizes, let's start with our blur strength. So here it's set to 18 pixels. I'm going to set it to zero. Now let's go to spread strength. So here I'm going to set this to 210. And then finally, I'm going to add my color. So I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool and paste my values between the brackets. Now, the next stage is very important because this is where we want to add a small snippet of CSS code in order to make our row content vertically centered. So this code can also be found in the link, which I'll add in the video description below. So you can go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to come over here to the advanced tab. You want to click on custom CSS and then on the main element, this is where you want to add this CSS code. Now it's time to add all our links. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to add my text module. So to add our modules, I'm going to click on this plus button and um, I need the text module. I'm going to select it. And all we need in here is just the link item. So you can go ahead and uh, customize this and name it whatever you want. But for this example, I'm just going to call it link item. The next stage now is to stylize this text and make it really stand out on our wheel. So I'm going to come over here to design text. And the first thing we're going to do is to change our font to share text so that we have consistency. Next, in order for our text to stand out on this dark background, we need to make sure that it has a very light color. So in this case, I'm going to go with white. And then I'm also going to set my text size. So by default here, it's set to 14. I'm going to set this to 16. And for the letter spacing, I'm going to set this to one pixel. And the line height, I'm going to set this to 60 pixels. Now we're not done yet because we need to come over here to the sizing. And here we need to set our height. And our height here is going to be 60 pixels. Our width is going to be 250. And then finally, we're going to add some padding to the left. So I'm going to click here on spacing and then add my padding left. So now you can see it's not very close to the edge here. So that's all we need to do here. I'm going to save it. Now, we're also going to uh, add some more links to this. So to make things easier for us, we're just going to duplicate this four times. So now we have a total of five links. So as you can see, these are not positioned correctly. So let's go ahead and do that. So I prefer working in the wireframe mode. So I'm going to click here on expand settings, click the wireframe, uh, item and then I'm going to go in and start at and start positioning my text. So I'm going to come over here to design transform and I'm going to start with transform translate. So here we're going to be now notice we have this chain activated. So if you add a value in here, it will automatically be applied to this axis. So what we need to do is to break the chain because the value we're going to add is only going to be one of on one of the axis. So I'm going to go ahead and add 120 pixels. Next, I'm going to come on the rotate and here we need to add 60 degrees and then we're going to go to the transform origin and here we need to set, set this to 50. So pretty much that's all we need to do. I'm going to save this, move on to the next one. So click on this module settings, advanced, transform. Okay, so here we're going to go to the transform translate, break the chain, add 60 pixels here. Move on to the next tab on the transform translate, I mean transform rotate. And here we need to set this to 30 degrees. So we are going to continue and add all the positioning of this. But now the most important thing here is to make sure you come over here and check if everything is positioned well. So once you've added all your links, this is what it should look like. So the next stage now is to add one more text module. And this is the module that's going to be the title of the menu. So this needs to be above all these menus that we've created. So in order for us to see our menus correctly, I'm going to come over here to wireframe mode. And then I'm just going to click on this plus button, search for my text module, select it. And I'm just going to drag it all the way to the top here. So pretty much that's all we need to do. Now we would need to go ahead and add all our text styles. Now to save us time, I'm just going to copy the styles from our third menu here. 
So I'm going to copy module styles and paste it over here. So that saves us going back and forth, adding all those um, text fonts, colors, sizes, and so on. So now the next stage is to adjust some more settings. So I'm going to come back over here to my module settings. Then I'm going to click here on design. So I'm going to go into the text. And the first thing we're going to do is to adjust our line height. And we are going to set this to 300. So on the height here, we just need to restore our value to auto. So the next stage is to give our CSS, uh, our menu, some CSS code. And the CSS code here needs to be this. And again, this CSS code can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Now let's take a look at what this design looks like so far. So I'm going to come over here and click on the desktop view. And this is what it looks like so far. All right, so the next stage now is adding the spinning hover effect to our row or wheel. So to make things less confusing, I will refer you to the post which I'll link to in the show notes below. And you just need to add those values. And this is going to end our final result. So let's take a look at what this looks like so far. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to also publish this design, exit the visual builder. So now when I mouse over here, we notice that we have this animation effect. And it's important that these links here are linked to either a page or an external website for these to work. And edit that link is very straightforward. I'll show you in a minute. And as soon as you uh, move your mouse away from the wheel, it goes back to normal. And then when you do that, these come into action. So let me show you how to add the links to those links that we've added. So I'm going to enable the Visual Builder one more time. And then I'm going to come over here to one of these uh, menus. And notice that we have this option here which says link. So this is where you want to come in and add your link URL. So in this case, I'm just going to add a blank one. You can also set your target here. So if you want to open the same window, you can do that or open in a new tab. But, you know, for usability, I think opening in a new tab is better. So go ahead and add, add in a new tab and then save. So you want to do that to all these links. And pretty much this is all you need to do to make this work. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.